What is up guys? Welcome to another episode of the vlog on the last one or the previous one where we're trying to fix this car right here, my little brother's car. Ooh, that took a while. It's still rattling pretty pretty much like the same amount it's it has before. Check engine lights blinking. All right, put my, I don't like shit in my, I don't like stuff in my pockets when I drive. I like keeping it all on the side right here. Still sounds like a Subi. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't run any better. It likes to shift early still. Like it doesn't, it doesn't like revving out. It does feel slow, really slow. Look how cool this thing is. I like how it pops out like that. And then you can hide it too, look. <laughs> and the music will still play, but you know, it's hidden so it doesn't distract you. And if you wanna take it out again, just press that button. Ta-da, it's like Fast and Furious type, type shit. My cousin decided to come over. We're gonna wait for him, check out this car, and see what the results are. Okay, my little cousin finally came over. His name's Gabe. Say what's up. He has this device. What is this called, Gabe? OBD scanner. It's an OBD scanner to kind of check for the air codes of the car. He's trying to find the place for it to plug in. And then I'm going to take a photo of all the... On the thing? Oh, there you go. Waiting for vehicle to respond. So there's a cylinder misfire. Is that it? Uh... Coolant thermostat, temperature, low thermos regulating. Yeah, that's pretty good. We went inside, we cleaned the MAF sensor, and we cleaned out the throttle body to see like if that would help the car a little bit. And then towards like the end, my little cousin came over, he had an OBD sensor. He plugged it into the car, and we found out this thing has a misfire. It's misfiring in the in cylinder one. Uh, we found out this thing is boom, boom, boom. And we found out that this thing is misfiring in cylinder one. So today what we're gonna do, we're gonna open this thing up again. We're gonna change out the spark plug and maybe the ignition coil in this car to see if that thing, if that helps. This is gonna be my first time doing this. So, so I have like a rough idea how to do it, but you know, I'm gonna always check back uh, my laptop for, you know, for references just in case I get something something wrong and kind of just a little house tour this is what we have right here our lineup we have an s500 this thing isn't working right now the transmission just completely died we got my mom's s550 we got my little brother's c300 and then we got big mama the Maserati GT here but yeah let's get started on this and kind of like set up all my crap right here okay i went on ahead and bought a spark plug so this is what we're going to use and i also bought an ignition coil you can get these at autozone all you have to do is just tell them your your make and model of your car and then bring it out for you this was about let's see the receipt that was 40 47 bucks and then this one was only nine dollars hopefully we'll, we'll do this first we'll change the spark plug first and see if that fixes the problem. If that doesn't, then I'll change the ignition coil. And if that doesn't work, then um, it might be something something else. Uh, ignition coil looks like... Uh, I'm hoping I don't have to use this just because I want to be able to return it. And so yeah, that's how it looks like. Kind of like a bang bang bang. Also bought dielectric grease. You're gonna use this at the tip of the coil and over here uh, where it kind of like seals seals it in. Keep this moisturized so that if you ever were to replace it or pull this out again, it, it won't like crumble and stick to the spark plug. All right, boys and girls. So in order to do this, in order to change your spark plugs, you're gonna need, you might need a flathead screwdriver. You're gonna need a Torx T30 screwdriver and you're gonna need one of these a wrench 
uh, you're gonna need a 5 8 just to to screw in the spark plug and you're gonna need like some extensions I have two extensions right here that came in that came with the tool set to make this longer because it's kind of like deep inside the engine and then you're gonna have to like unscrew that out hopefully this this is what fixes the problem the misfiring in cylinder one I have no idea which one is cylinder one yet so we're still <laughs> We still have to like kind of take this apart and kind of determine which cylinder it is. I think it's the it's the one it's the first one on the left. But anyways, let's get inside the engine again and um, yeah, I'll show you guys how to take it apart. All right, before we start, you want to make sure your engine is cold. You don't want to work with a hot engine. It's gonna be harder for you to take out the spark plug because when the metal is hot, it expands. So it's gonna be even harder for you to like unscrew that thing. And plus, you don't want to work on this thing when it's hot because uh, you might burn yourself so first we want to remove the intakes one's right here the other one's over there all you have to do is compress this portion and pull it out so I'll go to do that right now it should come out pretty pretty easily see how it came out really easily right there and then over here if you guys can see that there's a little section here where the plastic clips on together you can either use a flathead screwdriver to like press that in so it can come out or just like try to wrestle with it. Either way it's fine. And if it comes off right here, because it's coming off right here right now, don't worry, it's fine. You can remove it that way too. And all you have to do when you put it back together is just put it back where it came from. This one you just pry it up. And then now for this portion, what you want to do is unclip that very easy. You just slide it. If I can get my hand in there. There you go. Unclip that. And then lift up from both sides. And make sure you unhook the hose right here. If you guys can see that. Yeah, unhook the hose right there. Pull this up. Right there, we have spark plug numero uno. All right, I've run into like a serious problem. Uh, I don't have an adapter for this thing, for the T30 to, so I can put it on like a wrench so I can't get the screw out anyway, so I have to go back to the store again. Huge lesson to you guys. Uh, before you start this project, make sure you're prepared with all your parts or else you're gonna have to be going back and forth from the store. Cause see, I can't get that, I can't get that out right now. Cause that, that's like really on there and I need like a wrench or something. See, I have the right screw, it's just I don't have an attachment to put this thing on so I can take it out. The power drill is not powerful enough to get that thing out, um, so yeah, I'm gonna... Two hours later. So I just came back from the store, this is what I got, it's, it's a T30 with like a wrench, like kind of like adapter thing. You can't take this apart unfortunately and neither did they sell any adapters, which kind of sucks for wrenches at least but finally got this and you're gonna need you're also gonna need a little adapter just so that you can you can attach it to like kind of a bigger wrench this is uh three this is three ace and then this one's like really really tiny that's why that's why you need like an adapter like this so that let me show you real quick so that you can attach everything so that one goes like that and to the bigger one with all these adapters on top with all these extensions I mean plug it in there you, oh, oh, there you go so now I have my contraption right here <laughs> to unscrew this thing so finally we can unscrew this right there that screw and that one it's about freaking time there you go. So now both are off and now you can just wiggle you should be just be able to wiggle this thing out there like that like so and it should be should be dry and there we go the spark plug and we're gonna use a 5 ace to unscrew that so I'm gonna get my extension again take off the small one Put on the 5 eighths and unscrew that. Oh, 
Okay, you guys don't realize how happy I am right now because, okay, I have, okay, I have the right socket. It's a 5 eighths, right? But in order to do this, you have to get a thin walled 5 eighths socket. And I was looking everywhere. I was panicking. I was like, shit. Do I have to go all the way back to AutoZone just to get that socket? But no, we have one. Oh my god. Oh my god. So yeah, we have a 5 eighths thin wall socket. I'll link everything up in the description below. Gotta take that out, out right now. Okay, this is gonna be kind of tough. So you, what you want to do is kind of go slow. Ah, oh, there you go. Got it. And... There you go folks, there we have it. We have the spark plug that's out and you could notice the tip is burnt so this thing is completely done for which is why uh, why this car was rattling so much and just for you guys to get an idea of how much it was rattling, go check out the first video. I'm not too sure if you guys can notice it too well because this camera does have image stabilization which is kind of a bad thing in this case but the car was rattling pretty, pretty good. You, we're going to put some dye dielectric grease along the coil right here at the tip and at the end right here this is the new spark plug all nice and shiny uh, you're probably wondering why I'm not gonna put anti-seize on it or I don't know if you guys were anyway but uh, when I'm looking on the manufacturer's website and kind of a YouTube video they released when it's chrome like when it's kind of like a silver like this at least the threading you're not supposed to put anti-seize on it and you're only supposed to put anti-seize if this is more of kind of like a brownish tannish color uh, when you buy it new, not not used, when, uh, just to clear that up, when you buy it new. And you're only supposed to put a light, a light coat. With these silver ones, they've already accounted for that, so they already p applied some type of coat onto it. I'll link up the video in the description so you guys can see that in more detail. It's from the manufacturer, so I trust what they're saying instead of you know kind of like technicians or anybody else so i'm going to put this back in and then put in the coil when you when you put this in you don't want to you don't want to screw it on too tight but tight enough where you know it's in there you don't want to over tighten it because this could break so just be very careful there you go that thing is in there now now put on some grease so we have the dielectric grease right here. We're gonna put it on the coil. Hopefully the coil is not damaged. You don't want to make sure you don't want to put it on any of the metal components in there. You're just putting it around the plastic. So we're gonna get a little bit, not too much. Just rubbing it on the tip. I'm getting a cotton swab so I can take off the excess and spread it around the inside a little bit. And then I'm gonna put some where it seals too. Just a little bit, just a tiny bit. Jamming that thing back in there. Make sure the wires are not all cut up. And we're gonna screw that back in and see if it starts. Remember, lefty loosey, righty tidy. So now that after all that's done, we're gonna let's put back all back the air filters and everything, the uh, the covering, and then we'll turn on the engine and see if it runs. And make sure before you uh, put everything back in, make sure you got everything, all your parts and everything, all your tools out of the engine bay before you start the car. Close it. Let's hope, let's hope this works. I'm really, I'm really hoping this, this is gonna fix the issue. Oops. Okay. Turn it on. I think it fixed it. It's not, yeah, it's not rough idling anymore. It, the, the revs are consistent at one. Oh, it doesn't sound like a SUV anymore. It doesn't sound like a SUV anymore either. Look, see, it sounds kind of high pitched. Oh, okay, oh, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, 
if I just leave you guys right here, the car's not shaking. That's me. Yeah, the car's not shaking. It was like, but now it's like, chill. It's like, relax. Until you get on the gas. Oh. And just to think, he just took off the mufflers on these things, and this thing made such a huge difference already. There's a little bit of drone, teeny bit, but it was so much more, so much less than my E class. Like my E class, when you took out the mufflers, like it was kind of unbearable. You want to just shoot yourself, even though I kept it for a while because I like the sound. But this one is so it's bearable. Like if you take out the mufflers, you're you're golden. It was like 80 bucks for us just to for them to weld it off and put pipes to replace them. And there you guys have it. The car is fixed. The car is not rough idling anymore. It sounds kind of high pitched like it's supposed to as a V6. It doesn't sound like a Subi. I mean, it, Subis do sound good, but this thing shouldn't sound like a Subi because it's not a Subi. We, we did it guys. We, we did this together. We were able to overcome our differences. We were able to overcar, overcome our ignorances. Uh, about working on cars, at least mine. Like, I had no idea how to work on cars kind of like prior to these past two episodes, basically. So now we know how to change the spark plug on a C300 W204. Oh, yeah. I'm so stoked. To be honest, it wasn't that bad. It's just buying the parts and going back and forth was like the most frustrating thing. Literally, it was just like taking off the car cover and just unscrewing a bunch of bolts, a few bolts, and just, yeah. It's just the part, it's just the tools that you need are unique, so you have to keep going back and forth, which is so stupid, but now it's working. And the spark plug was only like nine bucks. I didn't even have to replace the coil. The coil was 46, I'm gonna return that. Of course, of course. Yeah, this car isn't like crazy loud, even with the mufflers off. So I definitely recommend like if you want like kind of like a more sporty feel to your car, to your C300, to definitely take out the mufflers. It's not even that bad. It's not like, it's not even as loud as the Maserati. It doesn't even come close even with the mufflers. But with the mufflers on, this thing is like super duper quiet. It's like freaking, it's like quieter, it's quiet as like a Tesla, so. But yeah, guys, so we were able to make it work. <sighs> it's so awesome uh, how that was the issue. And luckily, we didn't have to use the coil because that shit's expensive. But definitely, I'm going to make uh, an update video when we get it back from the dealer or what the dealership says. See what's really wrong with the car, if there's anything else wrong with it besides, you know, just the misfiring and then the temperature gauge in the coolant. But anyways, that's all for now for this car. So stay tuned for the third episode of this car where we see kind of what's wrong with it, everything they say from the dealership. But anyways, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Peace. Richard Quico out.